members of the University of Arkansas's Clinton School of Public Service Class of 2021. Congratulations on your graduation and on what you did to get here. I also want to congratulate the family members and members of your support systems who helped you come to this special day, especially across two academic years that have been anything but ordinary. I'd like to thank the faculty and staff whose dedication to the graduates and their growth as leaders has been a profound investment in our common future. And finally, I want to thank and congratulate Dean Skip Rutherford as he retires after 15 years. Skip has been part of the Clinton School since it was just an idea to create America's first graduate school for public service. From the very beginning, he was working with our foundation to plan the library, to plan the Clinton Center, to do everything that helped to bring the school to life. He played an important role in bringing the unique curriculum to life, and he's worked hard to bring inspiring speakers from all around the world to share their experiences with the students and the public. I'm very, very grateful for his service, and I wish him well in his next chapter. It's not too much to say that this year's class is graduating at a pivotal moment. With the development of safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines, there is finally a light at the end of the tunnel. But our goal can't simply be to return to where we were before the pandemic hit, because clearly it just wasn't working. There was too much inequality, too much instability. The whole enterprise, was not sustainable. This last year has ripped the cover off long-standing injustices in America and around the world. We've seen historically underserved and marginalized groups bear the brunt of both the human and the economic impacts of COVID. We've seen time after time how the color of a person's skin still determines how they'll be treated in nearly every aspect of American life. We've seen how scapegoating and slurs can have real consequences. And we've seen how fragile our democracy and many others around the world really are. The good news is that your generation is better equipped than anyone to take these challenges on. That's especially true of graduates of the Clinton School, because you spent two years learning with and from one another and seeking out problems to solve, opportunities to seize, and people to serve. Here's my last bit of advice. The work of making change has never been easy. You have to keep at it day after day, year after year. I'll be turning 75 this year. And I can tell you from now a long experience that quite often, every time you gain some ground, something comes along and you fall part way back down the hill. The important thing is to get up, dust yourself off, and start pushing the rock back up the hill again. That is the eternal, unending work of progress, democracy, and your life. And it's always much worth it to keep pushing. I wish you well in all your endeavors, and I can't wait to see what you'll do next and in the years ahead.
marking the beginning of more than 15 years as dean. In his time with the Clinton School, Skip has overseen tremendous growth and evolution for the school as it has increased its enrollment and expanded its services. During his tenure, the Clinton School of Public Service has attracted students from all over the world, and our students have completed more than projects in more than 93 countries. Under Skip's leadership, the Clinton School has built a unique emphasis on project-based learning. He strengthened partnerships with other UA system members, helping the school develop concurrent degree programs with the College of Business, the University of Arkansas, the College of Public Health, the University of Arkansas Medical Science, and the University of Arkansas School of Law. In addition, Dean Brotherford created the Clinton School Online Program, which is designed for those already working in their desired field, giving them the opportunity to enhance knowledge, skills, and networking needed to advance their careers without relocating or disrupting their personal lives. Additionally, his tenure was a tremendous expansion of the Clinton School Speaker Series, which has welcomed countless authors, political figures, and journalists, and provides a venue for the public to engage in discussions of the issues of the day. Outside of the Clinton School, <clears throat> Skip is well known for his many career achievements and honors in Little Rock and across Arkansas. He's also known for his compassion for others, helping those that come to him for advice or assistance. The phone is run many, many times asking if they could pick Skip's brain or if he could help them with a project or if he would be a speaker at an event. And his answer is usually, yes, I will. He is a behind the scenes person and not one to talk about his accomplishments at all. But today I will mention just a few. Skip was a key advisor on President Bill Clinton's presidential campaign. He was president of the Clinton Foundation. He secured the grant that made Sturgis Hall the oldest LEED certified green building in Arkansas. He was named Tourism Person of the Year at the Arkansas Governor's Conference on Tourism. He was honored as the Arkansas of the Year by the Arkansas Broadcast Association. He is the recipient of the William F. Rector Memorial Award for Distinguished Civic Achievement in Little Rock. He was named Arkansas of the Year by the Arkansas Times newspaper and Headliner of the Year by the Arkansas Press Association. And he was awarded the Humanitarian Award from Just Communities in Arkansas and the Martin Luther King Award for the Black Community Developers. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dean James L. Skip Rutherford. Thank you for coordinating graduation. 
And thank you for coordinating and being a part of and helping build the best speaker series on a college campus in the country. Dr. Bobbitt, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you for your system leadership, your Clinton School Year support, your personal friendship. And I must say, after the legislative session, I'm just glad to see you still standing and smiling. Though not here, I want to thank Dr. Alan Sub, who recruited me, and founding dean, David Pryor, who inspires me. And also this afternoon, I honor the memory of graduates Wambui Gugi, Amanda Harris, Jenna Rhodes, and Lauren Remedios. Throughout recent history, there have been defining generational moments, such as Pearl Harbor, the Civil Rights Movement, Vietnam, 9-11, and Hurricane Katrina. Generational moments result in new normals. For the graduates we are honoring today, you experience four defining moments in a matter of months. A deadly pandemic, an economic collapse not seen since the Great Depression, George Floyd telling the world that he couldn't breathe, and a violent insurrection at the United States Capitol. Unfortunately, from the beginning of the COVID pandemic and throughout 2020, public health was marginalized. Several in the Clinton School world have witnessed the virus up close and personal, some tragically. Like many COVID survivors, some still have and may well have health issues for the long haul. For many individuals and families, COVID can now be classified as a pre-existing condition. The virus is still with us, and your actions and inactions, though well-intended, may determine the health, safety, and well-being of others. That's why advocating for public health is public service. And please, please lift up India, where we have had 28 on-site projects. During these past months, students endured isolation and exhaustion. You lived with anxiety and concern for your families, your friends, and yourselves. You saw America at its best as health professionals and largely underpaid frontline workers put their lives on the line. But you also saw it at its worst when killer mobs ransacked the Capitol. In the midst of confusion and chaos, you spoke up and showed up against injustice. And in November, you turned out in increasing numbers to vote, validating that big parts of public service are speaking up and showing up. Keep doing both. Today you earn a Master of Public Service degree. Just as Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson are vaccines for the virus, public service can be a vaccine for division. Public service is where people can seek common ground, find common purpose, promote common good, and where all can contribute. It's one reason why I admire the work of the Center on Community Philanthropy, the first of its kind in the country. Through the Center's leadership and programming, Everyone has something to give, and everyone can be a philanthropist. Along with the center, among the many things I will follow are the field service seeds that you and those before you have planted. Some of these seeds 
have already helped produce an education center at Heffern, the VISTA program in our house, the Boys and Girls Club and the Delta Circles in Helena, a fresh water well in a remote Tanzanian village, the Ronald McDonald House Suite at UAMS, a campus food pantry at UA Little Rock, a youth opportunities organization in Kenya, Newport's Arts Festival, West Memphis's Community Kitchen, Hope's Public Service Academy, Arkansas's Gender Equity Scorecard, the Greenhouse at Little Rock Children's Library, the Rwandan Scholars Program, Latino Student Recruiting at the University of Arkansas Cossetot, a vocational center in Zanzibar, plus more. And if you read today's Arkansas Democrat Gazette, coming soon to state tourism and cultural heritage will be the Arkansas Barbecue Trail. In 2023, when people look back 50 years at the report of the 1973 Arkansas Governor's Commission on the status of women, led by the late Diane Blair, they will see a 40-year update by a team of Clinton School students. At the same time, countless impactful projects may not be so publicly visible. Those relating to research and evaluation, best practices and needs assessments, toolkits and facilitations can be essential, however, for empowering communities and organizations. Collectively, in financial terms, these projects represent a strong return on taxpayer investment. In 2009, a Clinton School student explored and discovered widespread interest in an executive master of public service program. Technology at the time was not that proficient, but that project was the seed that brings our online graduates here today. What a positive difference Clinton School Online has already made and will continue to make. And it's rewarding to see the opportunities and advancements some graduates are having. Among the many things higher education, business, and industry have learned over the past year is how remote work can reduce costs, increase talent recruiting, and provide family-friendly professional options. That new normal is already happening in places like Arkansas Children's Hospital. Just as I believe it is wonderful our MPS students can complete their second year anywhere in the world, it's wonderful that our online students can keep their jobs and not have to relocate or disrupt individual and family lives. For a program based on experiential learning with no in-person classes during the summer, I've never been big on excessive brick and mortar with the associated overhead and maintenance costs. But I am enthusiastic about innovative classrooms in food banks, rainforests, villages, venture centers, health clinics, libraries, homeless shelters, congressional offices, and city halls. The Clinton School academic footprint is statewide, nationwide, and worldwide. It is not place-bound, it is talent-bound. But, and complicated even more by a virus-changed economic environment. Many young adults are drowning in student loan debt. That has been a cause of mine since becoming dean, because student loan debt is one of the most concerning racial and gender issues of our time. Ninety percent of black students take out student loans. Research shows that 12 years after starting college, the average black 
borrower owes more than she or he originally borrowed. And women have two-thirds of all the student loan debt. That is why affordability, faculty advising, first-year career placement strategies, wise student project selections, and graduation rates all matter. I'm excited, though, about the future for our new graduates and current students. For you, I am increasingly confident there indeed will be joy in the morning. Post-pandemic, you will have the skills and the experiences the world will be needing. And I'm optimistic that sooner rather than later, you will ride the wave of another, but much more inclusive and equitable Roaring Twenties. Thanks to a talented and diverse faculty and staff, one that looks like America, along with a dedicated group of special volunteers, more seeds will hopefully continue to be planted. And higher education overall has almost 40 billion in new funding coming from the American Rescue Plan Act. This unprecedented infusion will provide hundreds of millions of new dollars to Arkansas colleges and universities, including more direct assistance for students. Throughout my life, I have been blessed with those who opened doors for me. As dean, I have tried to open some for others. That's the spirit of one of my favorite quotes. The choice you never can make is the choice you never heard of. I recently read about a professor teaching a leadership class. The final question on the final exam was a person's name with students being asked to identify who that individual was. No one answered it correctly. The answer was someone students, faculty, and staff ran into often. The person who cleaned their classroom. On my final Clinton School leadership exam, Vicki and Nathaniel Clay, I know your names. Thank you. System. It's indeed my pleasure to welcome you all here today to celebrate commencement of graduates of this wonderful school, the Arkansas Clinton School of Public Service. I'm thrilled, frankly, to be able to attend such a ceremony in person. If you think back just a year ago, uh, in a very short period of time, we had to pivot to a new normal, as the Dean mentioned. And so it's very good to see all of you here today. Uh, it's especially good to see that everyone is exhibiting uh, good use of masks here today, which I find very good. Today is a formal culmination of very hard work and perseverance of these students who had to deal with unprecedented challenges to complete their education. So I'm pleased to join your family, and your friends, and your faculty mentors who are here today to celebrate your completion of the Master of Public Service degree. This is really a truly unique educational experience within our system and indeed, I would suggest within all of our education in the country. As students who have chosen to seek a selfless calling into public service, perhaps no other Clinton School class has completed their public service education and training in more critical time for our nation and this world. Many of you will go on to serve important roles in nonprofit, governmental, and non governmental organizations that are either directly fighting the COVID 19 pandemic or indirectly helping to mitigate the effects of this pandemic on institutions and communities and individuals across the world. 
By earning your degree, each of you has not only made a profound impact on yourselves and your families, but you have advanced the cultural, intellectual, and I would suggest the economic well-being of this state. And so on behalf of the university system that represents all of Arkansas, I thank each of you and congratulate you on your achievement. It's my hope that you will carry the fundamental lessons of your fundamental of your Clinton School experience with you and utilize those lessons to help you navigate the uncertain road ahead. Instilling these qualities in our graduates ultimately represents the highest ideal of the entire university community, including this faculty, this staff, and even those of us tasked with much less exciting work with administration. You know, there's a saying that says that if you can't be good, be lucky, and I would say that I have been indeed fortunate that I took over this position. Skip Rutherford was the dean of this wonderful school. As President Clinton noted in the video, today's commencement not only marks a new chapter for our graduates, but as you've heard, it marks the completion of a remarkable tenure for our dean, Skip Rutherford. And he's decided, who has decided, that he needs a well-deserved retirement later this summer. Dean Rutherford's leadership has helped this school grow and develop in so many ways, including through the recruitment of many outstanding students and faculty, formation of partnerships across Arkansas, the country, and the world, which helped grow the school's outstanding field service programs. The creation of four successful concurrent degree programs, the establishment of the online NPS, and the development of the Clinton School Speaker Series into the premier lecture series in this country are all among the amazing achievements that Skip had during his tenure. Skip, you have embodied the spirit of the Clinton School through a lifetime of service to the University of Arkansas system and indeed to the entire state. These graduates and the 450 who preceded them representing a lasting legacy for your tenure as dean. So on behalf of myself and the Board of Trustees, I want to thank you for your outstanding leadership. Please join me in thanking Dean Rutherford once again. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention that his partner, Billy Rutherford, was here for every step of the challenges of setting up this school and helping it grow. Well, with the closing of one chapter from Clinton School, we prepare for the opening of another. I want you all to know that we're working diligently to identify the next best person to serve as the dean of the Clinton School. Because of the work of all of you here today and those who have come before you, I'm confident that we'll find a highly capable leader continue the great work in growing this unique institution. No previous group of graduates has entered the workforce at a more critical time for their profession or under more challenging circumstances brought on by a worldwide pandemic. But I'm very confident about the future because of what you have and what you will accomplish. As President Kennedy remarked over 60 years ago, you cannot do all the good this world needs, but the world needs all the good you can do. Thank you, congratulations on your achievements. I also want to welcome everyone to graduation. This is a bittersweet moment for us. Sweet because we're in person. We get to gather together and celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates. Better because it's our last graduation with Dean Rutherford, and we will miss him dearly, and he will always be Dean to us. So graduates, some journey, huh? On top of the long hours studying and the tests and the papers and the group work and the lack of sleep and the worry, which have worn out graduate school students across history, you also had to deal with a global pandemic. This reminds me of Ann Richards saying that Ginger Rogers did everything that Fred Astaire did, but backward and it heals. I know that some of you felt like you were dancing backwards and it heals a lot of the time. And still you accomplished so much. So first, let's look at the public service hours you put in. During practicum, you produced 8,781 hours of service. During the International Public Service Project, you produced 8,760 hours of service. And while completing your capstone projects, you accumulated 7,924 hours of service. And additionally, six of the graduating online students 
Pam Magulis, Jeff Netter, Amanda Richardson Nipper, Lisa Taylor, Rinda Hall, and Aaron Utley earned the inaugural Dean Rutherford Service Award by completing at least 100 hours of volunteer public service during their time as students in the program. That's a total of 25,965 hours of service. Quite impressive. real-world impact. One practicum team partnered with the Children's Advocacy Centers of Arkansas to identify current trends, existing support services, and gaps in service regarding child sex trafficking in Arkansas, and made best practice recommendations for creating a response plan. Another team partnered with the Transportation Alliance Program to analyze qualitative data from interviews and focus groups with participating case managers and clients of the program to measure the perceived impact of its plan to distribute free bus passes to individuals experiencing homelessness. And yet another team partnered with the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture Cooperative Extension to provide infrastructure recommendations to rural communities that have historically been forgotten and need revitalization. Although you couldn't travel the globe, your service work affected people across the globe. Cassidy Mitchell and Robert Morris partnered with Helping Overcome Obstacles Peru, a nonprofit enhancing the education of disadvantaged children and their families in Flora Tristan community of Peru. Ososa Osaritan worked with Canopy Northwest Arkansas on refugee resettlement. She assessed the perceptions and attitudes of the Northwest Arkansas community towards refugees and Canopy Northwest Arkansas's work. Kate Jenkins worked with LIV Lasuria to create evaluation plans for the South African organization's baby home, foster care system, and after school programs. Patrick Isak Kunwu worked with the Girls Power Initiative, a feminist NGO in Nigeria that works on gender sensitive empowerment of children and young families. And your capstones also had far reaching impact. Mackenzie Bolt supported organizational development efforts for the Central Arkansas Harm Reduction Project, which provides health resources to people impacted by substance use and housing insecurity. Jeff Metter developed a program to increase dual credit course participation among economically disadvantaged Latinx students in Granbury High School in Texas. Corinne McClure developed an evaluation plan for dialogue-based public engagement activities with essential partners. And Pam Gorlis developed a program plan to examine the effects of deliberative pedagogy on children of color in after school programs. And there are other accomplishments outside of school. Tim Campbell was selected for Governor Asa Hutchinson's task force to advance the state of law enforcement in Arkansas and is now serving on the Pulaski County Criminal Justice Coordinating Committee. Michael Morrison was elected and sworn in as Justice of the Peace for Crawford County. Katarina Norrie delivered a presentation to members of the Washington State Legislature on an evaluation of the Washington State Climate Assembly. Farrah Beck was announced as a semifinalist for the Fulbright English Teaching Assistant Program. Leslie Parker was awarded a National Security Education David L. Bowen Fellowship to study Portuguese in Camajos Language Center in De Rio, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And Pam Marvelous was accepted into the doctoral program in Education, Policy, and Planning and Administration at, at Westchester University of Pennsylvania. In short, you have done amazing things. And I cannot wait to see the amazing things that you're going to do out in the world. And I am proud to call you colleagues. Thank you.
behalf of the faculty, it is my honor to certify the candidates for the Master of Public Service. Will all the candidates who are to receive the Master of Public Service degree please rise and remain standing. President Bobbitt, I certify to you that those candidates who have completed all their academic requirements are entitled to receive their degrees. Thank you. Now, by virtue of the authority vested by law and Board of Trustees of the University of Arkansas System, I confer upon each of you the respective academic degree for which you have been recommended with all the rights, the privileges, and responsibilities and obligations appertaining thereunto. And I offer you my sincerest congratulations. Thank you. Please make a line. Nikki Nicole Anderson. Marley McKenna Ball Davis. Farah Jean Back. Mackenzie Ball. <laughs> Jennifer Martin Brown. Timothy Terrell Campbell. In absentia, Catherine Grace Clark. Andrew Coker. <laughs> Linda Diaper.
Michael Vincent Doan. Taylor Adline Donnerson. Blake D. Ferris. In absentia, Janisha J. Graham. Brenda Hall. Elizabeth Lee Hall. <laughs> Nada Hamida. Courtney Elizabeth Hepton. Brock Highland. Caitlin O. Jenkins. Abraham Teklai Kahasa. Baraka A. Kangwa.
In absentia, James W. Knudsen. Pam Margolis. Corinne Lane McClure. <laughs> Jacob Lynn McGuire. Cody Allen McKinney. <laughs> Jeffrey Joel Men. Cassidy Ann Mitchell. <laughs> Brittany S. Moody. Robert Anthony Morris. <laughs> Katarina Nuri. I saw Panu Patrick Omori. Isosa Solis Osaratan.
Leslie Parker. James Dylan Pitts. Amanda Richardson Nipper. Jalen Lane Sprout. Lisa Jean Taylor. Connor Thompson. James Aaron Utley. In absentia, Michael Allen Webb. <laughs> JC Wynn. In absentia, Alec Zills. Congratulations, graduates.
thank everyone for coming today to be part of this in-person graduation. Thank you uh, for participating. Thank you for wearing your masks. And I hope you get your shots, if you haven't already. The recessional uh, is the Clinton School alma mater. It was written by class 11's, or 2011, class 2011, David Watterson, who came to the Clinton School from the Berkeley College of Music. Uh, David Watterson is a really talented guy, and he did this. Uh, he and I were talking about it, and I said, we need an alma mater. He said, Dean, I think I can write you one. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it. Now, we will recess to the alma mater, but let me just tell you, when you think it's over, it's not. Okay? There is a second part. So, what we will do is that the stage will leave followed by the faculty, followed by the graduates. So if we could ask everyone to remain standing, uh, till everyone is out, we will um, we will proceed. So, ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Clinton School alma mater as we salute the graduating. 